Okay, so let's get started. Uh, this is exploratory online seminar number 90. Um, and today, I like to cover AUC and F1 score. These are the two sort of like uh, well-known like, or commonly used um, metrics to measure or like evaluate the binary classification prediction models. Okay, so then before getting into, let me introduce myself. My name is Kan Nishida, a CEO co-founder at Exploratory. We started Exploratory back in the spring 2016 to democratize data science. Since then, like we've been building uh, the tool called Exploratory. <clears throat> and also uh, we do this type of the seminar and the training to um, 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 you know, share our knowledge and skills around the data science. Okay, so that's it for uh, today's introduction, and then let's get into it. But before getting into, like, I just want to uh, kind of set up the expectation, sort of like a, uh, what we are talking about. So there's a bunch of analytics, um, um, you know, in, in the exploratory, and then obviously, like, a, it's there a bunch more uh, even outside the exploratory. But these are the, uh, don't, these are, this doesn't cover the, all of them, but it's pretty much most of the analytics that you can access in uh, uh, exploratory. And then the color is based on, this is a like statistical learning or machine learning or unsupervised learning. Um, today, what we want to cover is first, like it's going to be the uh, prediction model. The prediction model is based on, you know, like what you like to predict, right? So, like you want to predict the numerical stuff, or um, you know, like a categories, or uh, maybe survival rate, and then the algorithm would be different. But today, I we want to focus on this particular case, which is prediction model, but uh, at the same time, like you want to predict something called uh, logical data, like a true or false. And sometimes this kind of, um, <clears throat> this type of prediction model is called binary classification. It is a classification because it's like you're predicting a uh, class or categories, but also in that is specifically only like two outcomes, um, true or false. So like we call it binary classification, but it's really the prediction models to predict the logical data. Okay, so, um, and the, within that category though, there is a statistical learning and a machine learning models. Uh, but today it doesn't really matter, it's either way. We're gonna use the same measures like AUC and AF1 score. And then like, I wanna walk through, um, you know, what, what they are and how you wanna use them. Okay, so here, what makes the employee quit? So like, let's start with some kind of quick demo here. So like, here's a um, exploratory and employee data, okay? So we have the 1,470 rows means like 1,470 employee, each row represents each employee. And the 25 columns, so those are like employee attributes, okay? And here's the attrition column, and then that has two outcomes, so it's the logical data type and then true and false. True means the employee who already quit company or left the company, and the false are the uh, employee who is still at that company. Okay, so here's a question, like how we can um, uh, know like what makes some employee quit, some employees stay. What's the difference between these two groups? Okay, or well, between these two um, true and false groups, right? Maybe the age makes a difference or maybe the, um, uh, here the gender makes a difference or maybe the job role, certain particular job roles, uh, employee tend to, leave the company more than other job roles. So those are the questions that like, we want to find out. Okay. And the easiest way is uh, you can go to the summary view and then find what would be the variables that have some kind of correlated relationship with the attrition. Or other thing you can do is especially like multivariate analysis wise, like you want to bring on all the variables of your interest and then see how they will interact with um, um, the target variable, in this case, attrition. So let, let's do it here. So if I'm going to create, in this case, I can go with logistic regression or other machine learning models, such as random forest and XGBoost and so on. But I want to use a statistical learning model this time. Uh, so like I, here, the logistic regression um, and then target variable is attrition. And the predictor variable is I'm going to select all of them but uh, like in the last seminar, I talked about multi-coordinality problem, right? So um, if you're not sure what that is, is it, please take a look at the recording of uh, this online seminar. I'm gonna uh, walk you through like how you can find those recording after this. 
uh, seminar. But um, here, like a department and a job role, these are a hierarchical uh, relationship. So I'm going to get rid of department. And also here's a monthly income that has a high correlation with uh, job level. And um, uh, I, th I, th I think it could be something else as well, but especially the job level. So I removed these two. So now that like, we have 22 columns or two, uh, 22 variables to predict the attrition. Okay, so I'm gonna click OK and then click round bottom. And then behind the scene, it builds the logistic regression model and then do that as all uh, different types of calculations and it gives me a result. The important part here is that like first in go, when you go to the importance, then like you can see like which variables are more important to predict the attrition. In other words, which variables are more correlated to attrition. But this is a statistical learning model so like you can uh, um, interpret as is like when other variables are constant and didn't change, then what happened if the only the overtime change and how, um, how the attrition like either true or false would change. So like it looks like over time has a huge in, um, effect on attrition and job role and business travel and so on. And the next thing is going to the prediction tab and then like you can see like, okay, how is, how that over time um, have the effect on attrition. So obviously like uh, uh, over time, yes, employee tend to uh, leave the com uh, company more often than the no over time, no employee. Okay, so this, um, these are the two tabs. And then you can go to um, coefficient tab to see which variables are actually significant in terms of the effect on the attrition. Some variables uh, might not matter. Like it may, might have some kind of, it looks like a relationship, but it's actually not significant or it's like a marginal um, difference. So like here, like what you wanna focus on is the blue and the red. Those are uh, significant um, variables. Okay, so those are the basic thing. And then the next thing is that summary. And this is like really the topic of today. Here, when you go to the summary, basically this gives you, here's a one p-value thing. This is more like a statistical significant. So like this model actually is significant in terms of the relationship with attribution, in terms of the, um, make any difference in terms of predicting attribution or not. So not, that's not today's topic. Today's topic is from this AUC to recall. I specifically like a, uh, cited like AUC and F score or F1 score, but the F1 score is actually have something to do with precision and recall. So like basically I want to cover AUC, F score, accuracy rate, precision recall in today's seminar. Then like, you can know like sort of like how you can uh, evaluate that model that you just built. Okay. So let's get back to the slide. Uh, what I have just quickly done in the last couple of minutes is that, uh, hey, you build a model, like how you can interpret, you know, what the model is saying, right? So like we went through uh, from variable importance, prediction by variable and a coefficient, that's where we see it's significant or not. And then the last part, the evaluation, that's where we saw these uh, metrics and how we can understand these metrics. That's a today's seminar's topic. Okay, so starting with, let's start with accuracy rate. So accuracy rate is actually the very simple and intuitive, but this actually kind of drives all the conversation with today. So like, I'm gonna uh, go through um, this more like step-by-step, step. okay? So here's a customer data. It's different from the employee data, but this is for just for the, for the slides. And then we wanna predict which customer would convert, okay? So this is actual data and we already know which customer converted or not, okay? And then based on these variable, maybe like age or time spent on the website, country or industry where they're coming from, they matter or if that's the case, how it matter in terms of the conversion, right? So we wanna build a model to predict the conversion. How we do that is that we give the data to the algorithm, this case and the logistic regression, and then have it build a uh, model. In the logistic regression case, it just build a uh, mathematical formula behind the scene. And once model, uh, you build the model, then ideally like you wanna give the new data to the model, the models look at the age, time, country, industry information, and they predict if each uh, you know, new customer to, to convert or not, or false or true. Okay, how we can evaluate if this model has a high performance or low performance. When I said performance is like, 
um, prediction, you know, capability, prediction quality is like a, uh, pretty accurate or not accurate, right? Or it can depend, we can rely on this model or not. So far here is uh, what we saw on, under the summary tab is basically what's happening behind the scene is once it builds the model, then it takes the data. This is called training data because this is the data that we use or the algorithm use, the logistic regression algorithm use to build that model. That's called training data. So we give the training data to the model and pretend like we don't know the answer, but we actually know there's an answer there. But nonetheless, it have the model predicted. Okay. And then the cool thing about this is because we already know the answer, so we can compare right, uh, against the training data to see like if the, uh, it's accurate or not for every single role. But this is a sort of like a, we are testing against the training data. In this particular case, this is uh, good enough, but if you wanna do it more right way, and then you wanna go with the test mode in exploratory, you can actually go from uh, in a property, like you can switch to test mode. The default is not test mode, but you can switch to it. Then what's gonna happen behind the scenes is the data, when you have the data, let's say 700 employee data, or some, uh, sorry, 1,000 employee data, and then it splits into 70%, 30% in a randomly, random way. And then use that 70% of the data to build a model, and then like use a 300, uh, sorry, 30% of the data, or 300 employee in this case, um, to predict, against that data to predict, and then check the result back against the 300 employee data or 30% data. This is called, this green part is called testing data. Okay, I'm not gonna go into the detail, but if you're interested in like, please go to online seminar page and then like you can find the machine learning build, test and predict uh, seminar in a recording. And you can take uh, take a look at the detail. But anyway, either way, that, that's not really the uh, key part of today's seminar. Either way, what you want to do is basically, we're talking about the accuracy rate of the uh, model, right? So we want to compare the actual data on the, in the green highlighted and then a predicted uh, data, okay? And then if it's both of them are true or both of them are false, that means it's accurate. One of them is true and one of them is false, then that means it's not accurate, right? So that's that basically the basic, basic of like how you define the accurate or not. But here's a key, another key thing is that the predicted value, the model itself, the logistic regression model, doesn't return true or false. It looks like it actually, it, it, I mean, like from exploratory, like it, there is a column, newly created column has a true or false values, but the model itself doesn't. What it does, what it does predict is the probability. It could be 0 0.75, 0 0.35, or you know, 0 0.75 means 75% chance that it's going to be true. 30, 0 0.35 means 35%, right? So it returns this probability values. And then in the exploratory, the default threshold value is 0 0.5, meaning 50%. Then if it's greater than 0 0.5, and then we just label as true, if less than 0 0.5, and then we label as false. You can change this threshold value, but regardless, based on the probability values, then you will have this predicted value, predictive label or text, you know, text data, if you will. And once we have that, basically, like we want to compare this predicted label against the actual conversion, conversion data. Okay. And then to do, you all you need to do is basically create a pivot table, right? So something called prediction metrics in exploratory or in data science world, it's called often called commonly called a confusion metrics either way. But what it is really doing is uh, that column section is a prediction, predicted, uh, predicted. So the true or false. Okay. And then the sort of rows, the horizontal direction is the actual. Okay, so that means when I'm gonna use my mouse a little quick. So here, so model predicted true, but the actual data is true, then that goes in here. But the model predicted true, but the actually it's act, uh, the actual data was false, that falls in here. Okay, so 
basically, like once you have this, and these numbers are actually number of the rows, uh, um, 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 number of, in this case, for example, number of customers or employee, whatever that could be. Okay. And each section has its own name. The name itself is not that important right now. But the key thing is that if you want to see the accuracy rate, what you really try to do is that like if the model predicted true and actually true, and also model predicted false, and it, that actual data was false, those are the accurate data. And then for that, out of all the data, how much of these two positive, two negative section, these two red highlighted area. So that that ratio is the accuracy rate. Okay. So in this case, if we have a two uh, prediction and actual two is five and a prediction force and actual force is at 195, then that could be 0 0.875. Okay. So that means 87.5% that model predicts the correct or like accurate um, result or accurate prediction. Okay, so that 87.5% or 0 0.875, that's pretty good because the highest is 100% or, you know, uh, one or 100%, right? So that's pretty good. But is accuracy rate alone good enough? That's a that's a key thing here. And then obviously the answer is, is no. Um, the accuracy rate alone um, can mislead you. Uh, so you, we got to be very careful. So that's where this precision recall and then uh, further like F1 score AUC come in. So let's take a look uh, step by step. So let's focus on the area that actually misclassified or we call misclassification, basically like a wrong prediction or wrong answers. Okay, and with these two, both of them are wrong predictions, but actually there's a different name, type one error, type two error, because the nature of predicting wrong is slightly different among these two type of errors. Okay, and the type one error, type two error, I always use this uh, picture. So the type one error is a doctor, think of a doctor is a model that who sort of like predict. Okay, so left hand side, the model or doctor is saying, that you're not pregnant. But that person is obviously not pregnant, right? So like it's basically making a mistake. However, that this type, um, the doctor is saying true, like right? if you, you, you wanna predict the pregnancy. Okay, so the model predicted true, there's a mistype here, but the model predicted true, but it's actually wrong. So that's a type one error, okay? And then that's, um, then like what we want to know here in this area is that the, when the model predicted true, what's the probability that the model is correct? And that's called precisions. What that means here. So in the pred prediction metrics, so the kind of a whole, uh, vertical way, when the model predicted true, this is both red highlighted area, the highlighted column, okay? We have basically a 20. Okay, but then out of that, it's actually only five is correct, right? Uh, five is um, the true. So then when the model predicts the chance of being correct is 25%. Out of 20, only five was correct. So that's really the prediction, uh, precision, okay? And then when you go to, um, in the exploratory, you can go to this probability tab and you can see like how these are, uh, you know, sort of distribution between true and false. And first you might get confused with this thing, but let's go to the data tab first. And what's happening is here is a data, original data, and then the model actually predicts for each employee. And then when you go scroll to the right, and then uh, you don't have to scroll that far, actually here, here is a predicted probability. That's the values that model pre, uh, returns or predicts, okay? And based on this, the default is 0 0.5, uh, which is you can be uh, you can set here, binary classification, 0 0.5 is a default. So that means, for example, the first row is 0 0.78, that's greater than 0 0.5, that's why the predicted label is true. Next one, 0 0.04, that's like less than 0 0.5, so that's why the predicted level is false, okay? And then, based on this predicted probability, there are a bunch of like different uh, probability numbers, 
right? And then also, this is like a attrition. That's the actual data. Okay. So by using this, so like uh, we're gonna basically see, we want to see the distribution of this predicted probability, but also group by the actual data of the true and false. And that's what we are seeing this under the probability tab. Okay, so that means if I uh, show only the true, this is a true employee, okay? And out, out of them, and then basically like um, <clears throat> for this employee, the prediction model is giving different probability. Okay, and then the right now the threshold is right here, 0 0.5. Right, so these employee, so the uh, right hand side of this border line, the threshold line, these are the one right now labeled as true. That means the model is correctly predicting uh, these one, but less than 0 0.5, these are not predicted correctly because right now less than 0 0.5 is a label as false. Okay, so based on this, what's the ratio of these guys, right side of this borderline, out of all, um, uh, 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 sorry, sorry, that's, I was going to uh, talk about recall, but not yet, <laughs> but, but right now, so that's, uh, and then like, I'm going to bring in the force, right, here, and I'm going to just go to um, uh, here. I'm going to use this slide and start to, uh, here. Okay, uh, here's what we brought back in a force data. Okay, so that right side of this like a threshold, 0 0.5, the orange area is the one that those employees that predicted true because greater than 0 0.5. However, those guys are actually false. So that's a wrong, like a, that's like a type one error. Okay, and then, <clears throat> Sorry, type two, I think this is a, a misspell. This is a type, supposed to be type one error. Okay. And then blue area on the right side of the red red dotted line is a, the correct one. Okay, predicted true data out of all predicted true data. Okay. And then basically like what we want to know is the ratio of this. Okay, so this is like a blue here is a correct one, um, correctly predicted. And then this one are uh, um, wrongly predicted. But the model predicted true, all this area, orange and the blue. So basically like what we want to know for the precision is a ratio of this area. Okay, so when we go back to exploratory, uh, what is that uh, precision? The precision here, 0 0.79, almost 0 0.8, like 80%. Okay, so but basically that what this is saying is that 80% uh, is the blue and then 20% like is the orange. Okay, so that's the precision. And the next one is the recall, but recall is really about the area of type two error. So the doctor or the model says like a false, you're not pregnant but this woman was pregnant so like basically it's a wrong prediction right so basically what that is is that like, so that that's the error but then here what we want to know is the what's the probability that the model can correctly predict true out of all the actual true data so when the in this particular case when the the woman are pregnant and what is the chance, how, what is the chance that doctors can correctly identify the pregnant? Okay, so like what's the probability that the model can correctly predict true out of all the actual true data? In a prediction metrics, so on this, this particular line, in the true, this line is actual, actual data is true. All the pe people who have left the company and then out of which, how much of that is a model can correctly predict it. In this case, but this five, okay, out of 20, and five are the one that model can correctly predict it. And what is the ratio? That is 25%. Okay, so going back to the probability distribution chart, okay, and then when you, we show only the blue area, and these are the all, through 
employee, the people who have left the company. And out of which, how much of that is correctly predicted true by the model? That's the recall. And it looks like it's almost like a half and half-ish. So let's look at that uh, summary tab. And it says 0.41. It's basically 40%, uh, 44, uh, 41% or so, right? Okay. So that's that uh, recall. But here is a problem. So this, these two metrics it, uh, themselves are important, especially if you want to start predicting, like you want to know like what would be the error rate and that kind of stuff. But for now, like let's say like we want to understand what's the overall quality of this, uh, uh, this particular model, right? Then here's a, uh, one thing to note. Because right now, like we assume that this 0.5 or 50% threat threshold value is sort of like a perfect, right? Like we assume this 50% is somehow like kind of got given number or something, right? But it could be changed. It could be 0.2, like any number is fine. Either 0.5 is a default by expository, but you can change it. And it doesn't, you know, there's no particular like statistics called, you know, background behind 0.5 or anything like that, right? So that means when you, you can you change, obviously the precision or recall value will be different. And then as you can imagine though, precision and recall are in a trade-off relationship. What that means is, look at this chart. I move the threshold from 0 0.5 to 0 0.2. That means we can predict more true. So therefore, out of all the true data, I can predict correctly those two employee. However, so that that part is good, right? So like that's a recall is great. However, now like I'm have this like a right side of the, this red dotted line, I have now predicting true for the false employee. So I that particular case will start making more mistakes. So the precision goes down. So these two are in a trade-off relationship. What if you make one up and then the other one go down uh, kind of relationship? Okay, so now both precision and recall are important. How can we measure the performance of the model in a balanced way? Basically like, hey, you know what? Like right now, it doesn't really matter like which one is more important than not that kind of stuff is equally important. But I'd rather care that like this model is sort of like a uh, prediction. Uh, performance quality, okay? That's where it, this F1 score comes in. So all we need to do is basically, okay, like you precision recall, like these are trade-off, okay? So if you increase one and the other one decrease that case, why don't we get those two together and then calculate the average or mean? And that's really that this thing called F1 score. The calculation in more detail is it's not the arithmetic uh, mean, which is a, the, our familiar uh, typical uh, mean calculation. But in this case, it's a harmonic mean. And the formula is here. But the key point here is that this harmonic mean is often used to calculate the mean of rate values, ratio values, okay? So when you have like 40%, you know, and a 20%, you know, A group is doing the 40%, B group is 20%, and what's the uh, uh, average, right? So like in this case, like you can do like uh, add them together and then divide by two, but if these are already great, already been calculated values, so what you actually wanna do is something called harmonic mean to get the average of rate. And in this case, recall and precision, both of them are rates, right, or ratio. Therefore, like you wanna use harmonic mean. Okay, so then like, you can calculate that F1 score. So here, uh, you can see similar uh, result here. So like precision 0. Point, uh, let's say 0. 0.8, and this is like 0. 0.4, and the F score is 0. 0.54 or, you know, close to 0. Point like 55% uh, or so, okay. All right, so that's the F1 score. And the typically, like basically, uh, um, you know, if you're not really going to detail the deployment of the prediction model, first thing you want to do is basically like you see like F score and then like overall performance. And you, you can check the overall performance um, <clears throat> of the model. Okay, so that's the uh, pre uh, F1 score and the precision recall. 
And the last, not least, the AUC is actually today's main topic, um, <clears throat> at least for me. Uh, and so AUC is actually the more uh, sort of like more useful and in a way it's more commonly used. And then uh, especially for like when you are analyzing the data, AUC is more useful. Um, and if for anything, you can ignore all the three, like accuracy rate, precision, recall, F1 score. And you can just focus on the AUC. Um, I introduced those because they are, you know, uh, also important variables. But if it's useful when you analyze the data, they're not that useful, uh, not as useful as AUC. However, those are useful when you want to predict. Uh, when you start predicting and you want to start, you know, using those, then you need to know those numbers. But when you're analyzing. Basically, like you want to understand the relationship among the variables, how they're related, that kind of stuff, then AUC is the way to go. All right, so let's get into it. And so AUC is it indicates how efficiently the predictor variables in the model can separate true and false values of the target variable. And then AUC stands for area under the curve. And what is that curve? That kind of stuff, I'm going to start talking, uh, explaining um, now. So Remember the probability distribution chart? So um, uh, you, we have the threshold, let's say 0 0.5 or 50%. And then anything greater than 0 0.5, we predict as a true. Less than 0 0.5, we predict as false. But the problem is we don't know if we should use 0 0.5 or 0 0.2, right? So that means though, basically, we, the human, are deciding what the threshold will be and influencing the prediction uh, quality or prediction performance metric, such as recall and precision and accuracy rate and even like F1 score. Okay, so that means that's kind of weird because it depends where you set the threshold value. The result end up so different, right? Like it's precision recall will be way different, but also even the F1 score, the average of the uh, mean of the precision recall, that also can be different. So that's kind of weird because at the end of the day, what we want to know is how the, this model is performing, this model itself, not us, the one who said in the uh, threshold, the model. But the really, the, what the model really is, is that it contains the data, I mean, like uh, all the variables, the predictor variables, right? So we want to know, like, these predictor variables have anything to do with, in this particular case, attrition or not, right? So, like, I don't want that, like, my sort of, like, intuitive sense of, like, setting threshold um, to 0 0.5 or 0 0.4 or whatever that kind of stuff, okay? So what we want to do, is there any way to measure the performance of the model itself without having this kind of like human bias, okay? So regardless of where we set our threshold values, there gotta be the uh, way to measure how correctly the model can separate true and false data. Or it, uh, it, it sort of like in an intuitive sense, if we have the model that can perfectly predict somehow, like we have a you know such a amazing, beautiful relationship among the variables, then we can perfectly, I mean near perfectly, uh, predict. Right in that case, based on the probability, should be like the true data and the false data can be separated. Right. So what that means. <clears throat> so right now, like we are comparing between co predicted label and a conver conversion, which is the actual data, right? But instead, probability is the one that the model returns. Then why don't we use that against the conversion, like the actual data? That's kind of now all of a sudden weird because the, the conversion of the actual data is a label, like two or four, like a characters, and probability the numbers, how we can compare these two, right? So let's take a look at this case. We have like six uh, customers here. Okay, we have actually more, but I, I just pick the only six customers here. Time spent and convert that is the actual, and the probability is that uh, the predicted values. Okay, and then like we sorted it by the probability probability column. So from the small numbers to the bigger numbers, five percent to ninety five percent. 
And then it turned out that in this case, the smaller probability case, actual people are, are false. And then the, the bigger the probability, actual data are true people. So it seems like the false and true are kind of separated based on the probability numbers. Or if you sort by the probability numbers, then the false people comes first and the true people comes after. And if we display or if we visualize the probability distribution like we have been doing, then it's going to be like this. Okay. Now, like all of a sudden, there are more than, more than six people. But uh, uh, anyway, so it becomes something like this. And the blue color is the true, false, uh, orange color is the false people. Okay. And the x axis or horizontal axis is the probability. And don't you think this one somehow the probability number is actually like separating these two groups? Um, so that means a model is sort of like um, correctly. Uh, or doing a good job, like correctly predicting, you know, uh, these true and false people by the probability. So if we create sort of like a distribution curve, okay, or density chart, whatever you call it, and then we can just see these two distribution, the false people's distribution and true people's distribution based on the probability, okay? And then this is what I mean by it can separate because the probability of the values that model return. So the predicted values somehow to uh, separate in true people and false people very nicely. Let's look at another example here. Uh, in this case, we sorted the data by the probability, but somehow the convert column, that's actual data column, doesn't get sorted nicely. That means it's like a, it's not like a false comes first and a true comes later. Instead, a true false, a true false is super like a mix, right? In that case, if we visualize the distribution again, like last, uh, like we did, it becomes something like this. It was so um, uh, basically like mixed together that I couldn't just show in, in one chart. So I created separated two charts. Above is a false and lower is the uh, uh, two. Okay. And it basically created a sort of like a nice curve uh, that visualize the distribution of each group. And then like, I actually kind of uh, get them together. So it becomes something like this. Okay. So it's almost like uh, on top of each other or overlay on top of each other. Right. So Let's look at that. So left hand side is high performance. That's the one that we saw before, right? And then basically the probability values are sort of like reflecting the actual data. As opposed to the right hand side, the low performance case is the probability numbers. We cannot depend on the probability. The model is the, the, uh, returning the prob uh, probabilities, but uh, by using the probability, we can't separate true and false. It's almost like uh, you know you, you're gonna make you know mis make a mistake almost like um, you know fifty percent of a chance or something, right? And then it's so that's that's probably the way we can evaluate or we can sort of like see you know which more uh, like the, um, <clears throat> how the model is performing in terms of correctly uh, predicting. Um, or the predicted values are actually reflecting the actual or not, right? So ideally, we want to have something like this. When you go to the probability tab, right? Like you want to see something like this. But in reality, right now, like what we got is this. Go back to the exploratory um, here. The, when you go back to the probability, this is what we got. Okay. So it's like a, it's some uh, overlay area. So that's the problem. Right, but ideally, what we want is something like this. Oh no, 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 no. Here, yeah, something like this. Okay, then we use by using the probability. It doesn't matter where the threshold is, right? Because we can say like higher the probability, then those people are more likely the true, and then lower probability people uh, employee more likely to actually the false people. Then it just matter of like you know finding where it would be. Uh, that's where the threshold, the optimized threshold would be. It could be zero point four. It could be zero point four five or something like that. But it doesn't matter as long as it can separate, right? And that's what the model should be doing. And then that's what we should be evaluating. But we got this. 
Okay. So the question is that it, what uh, the answer first is like AUC is really comparing these two and then giving you the sort of like how much you know worse than this. And that's what that uh, really the AUC. So let's re take a look at the best case scenario and the worst case scenario. The best case scenario is the model that separates true and false perfectly. That's the ideal case, right? And the worst case scenario is that a model that cannot separate true and false at all. Okay, so I'm gonna go to these two extreme cases to explain how you can get uh, calculate the AUC. Okay, so for example, in this case, this is actually the AUC one case, white one. I'm gonna explain quickly uh, in in a minute. And here is the worst case scenario. The model cannot separate true and false, and the AUC is 0 0.5. Actually, AUC ranges from 0 0.5 to 1, not 0 to 1. It's actually from 0 0.5 to 1. 0 0.5 is the worst, and then 1 is the, the best. Okay. So in order to uh, calculate um, how the AUC is calculated, uh, understand how the AUC is calculated, let's take a look at this way. Okay, left hand side, the probability distribution chart that we have been seeing, okay? And this is the best case scenario. Right hand side is um, sort of like um, <clears throat> the chart, the two dimensional chart. And the X axis, which is like horizontal or red colored, that's a ratio of false data, okay? And then the vertical axis, a ratio of true data, what that's supposed to mean, right? So, so basically what I'm gonna start doing is that, Right now, the threshold is set to one or 100% that those red dotted line, okay? And I'm gonna start moving this to slightly left way. And when I move like this or that, okay? And basically the key thing here is that how much of the true is now we can see how much of the uh, true data out of all true data we can see. That's the vertical or blue uh, dimension, okay? And then the same thing for that, in this case, the orangish uh, color, but it's like how much of the force we can see out of all force data, that's the ratio of force. That is actually the X axis, the horizontal axis, okay? So now let's start. It seems like you can see, even see that this is a kind of curtain or something. Okay, and I'm gonna start moving and how much of the true you can see, how much of the force you can see, okay? And then when I move to the threshold to a little bit, like, you know, maybe like 0 0.85 or something like that, at this point, we are seeing 25% of the true people here, true uh, data, okay? So that on the right-hand side, I put green dots right there because we still haven't seen that false data or orange data, yeah. So it's like 0%, okay? So like the intersection of 0% of the ratio of false and then 25% of the ratio of true, that's where the green dot is. And then I'm gonna move the threshold a little bit to the left. And then now at this point, we are seeing a 50% of the true. But at this point, we still haven't seen any of the forces. So this is 0%. So that's why I put the green dots over there. And I'm gonna move the threshold to left hand side a little bit. And then now we can see 75% were true, but still the force is 0%. At this point, I moved way down to closer to 0.4. And then at this point, like we see 100% of the true data. So all the way to the top, that's a green, uh, green dot because still we haven't seen the false data yet. And then now when I start moving the threshold to the farther to the left, now we can start seeing the force data. Now that we are seeing a 25% of the force data. At this point, we can see 100% of the blue. So that's why like, uh, we put the green over there. And it's doing the same thing, 50% of the force and 100% of the true. And then do that all the way to that left. Okay, so at this point, we put all the dots. And now it's time to connect these dots. And this is called ROC curve. And it doesn't look like a curve, like it's almost like an ROC lines. And then that's, this is the extreme case. Usually it never becomes something like this. Usually like a little bit uh, more like a curve, but in this case, extreme case. So, uh, so nonetheless, let's call it ROC curve. 
And then the AUC is basically under this curve, ROC curve, so area under the curve. And then here, when you calculate, let's assume like, you know, like one X axis, uh, the hundred percent is one, and then the Y axis 100 percent is one. So therefore the area is uh, calculated as one. This is like the highest number, like 1.0. This is like as good as it gets, okay? So everything is really compared to this, how much, uh, you know, area like you got. That's really that you see. But uh, let's look at the worst case scenario first, okay? So this case, the model cannot separate two or four at all. So what that means, basically the overlay on top of each other is almost like a hundred percent overlay on top of each other. But then we're gonna do the same thing to calculate the AUC. So like you start moving this like a, a threshold. And at this case, at this point, we don't see any true, we don't see any false, sort of 0%, 0%, 0%. finally, when we move to like then maybe like less than 0 0.4, and then now we see 25% of the true, but at the same time, we see 25% of false there as well. So therefore, like I put the green dots on there, intersection of 25%, 25%. And it moves the threshold to a little bit to the left. And then now we see 50% of the true. But at the same time, we see 50% of the false as well. And then it moved to the 75%. Now both of them, true and false, 75%, 75%. And then we do that all the way to the 100%. And what happens if we connect those dots? And then basically what we want to calculate, AUC is area under the cup. Again, this case is an extreme case, so it happened to be a straight line, but not regardless, nonetheless, we want to calculate under this line. So that is AUC. In this case, 0 0.5, compared to the square was 1.0. This one is half of that, so 0 0.5, okay? Now we have seen those best case scenario, worst case scenario. How about this model? We got something like this, right? So how we can see the AUC? Basically do the same thing. So start moving the threshold and then we're gonna place dots based on the ratio of true, ratio of false, and then we're gonna connect the, the dots. So move the threshold to here. At this point, we already know that uh, we already can see the 30%. 30% of the people are already showing up already. Okay, but at this point, we can see not 0%, but like a 2%, it's a little tiny, but 2% of the false data start coming in. Okay, so that's that's uh, this area. This right here, can you see, like it's very tiny. So that area is 30%, but this orange area is 2%, okay. So now, when I when we move the threshold borderline to the left, now we see the 50% blue or true, and then we have a 5% of false. And when we move the threshold to further left, now we see 75% of the true, then we start seeing more false data. So like now like 20% of the uh, false. And then like at this point, when we move the threshold to the further left and then 90% of the true, and if now the false, we now already see the 50% of false. And then we do that all the way to the left, right? And then like you, we have a bunch of dots being uh, placed on the chart, right hand, right hand side, and then connect these dots. And then now, finally, that line looks like a curve, right? And most of the time it becomes uh, the curve um, because it be usually between 0 0.5 and 1. But anyway, so once you draw the curve and you want to calculate the area under the curve, in this case, 0 0.85. This again, compared to square, this is like a 0 0.85%, okay? And then let's take a look um, here. What's our numbers here? You go, go to the summary view and AUC is 0 0.8537. So basically 85%, okay? So that's the, and then the, the based on the ROC curve, you can go to the ROC tab to see this is the ROC curve, okay? So the one, one or 100% is basically the square, right? So the line tend to go here. Um, I think I have a slide for that one. Okay, there you go. So one is this red line 
Okay, so if this blue line is kind of like a stick to this red line, then it sh could have been a 1.0, but in reality it's not. And the worst case scenario could be like it's, it should be closer to this 0 0.5, this red line or diagonal line, right? Okay, so then based on that, like we have that AUC 0 0.85. Okay, so um, having said that, I think it's uh, we cover all that. So that's the AUC. So we can see like AUC, and then at the last, uh, like maybe like because we have still have some time, and I want to show something quickly. So we can see this is a logistic regression. Okay. And then I'm going to just copy this and to create random forest. And then we can maybe compare between these two uh, models, right? So same predictor variables, same target variables. I'm going to just change the algorithm to random forest and then click round bottom. And then behind the scene, build a random forest model and then do all the calculations and then get the result. Here, AUC is 0 0.96. And it's what the ROC curve look like, and that this is a 0 0.95. So compared to the uh, logistic regression, that the line started going towards to this like a uh, square-ish, like across to this one uh, area. Okay. So this by just looking at summary, uh, sorry, AUC, that this random forest is way better the the logistic regression which is 0 0.85 i mean i it may, may, maybe like way better is not really accurate maybe but still better right but there's one problem which is that run this is a machine learning model machine learning model tend to overfit with the actual data so it's easy for the run, machine learning model to have the better home uh, prediction quality compared to statistical learning model. Statistical learning, in this case, logistic learning, uh, logistic regression is based on the formula, like a mathematical formula. And there's a constraint, uh, which is like a bit, odd ratio has to be constant. So therefore, um, it, it's hard for the logistic regression, logistic regression to overfit. Overfit is like a, trying to fit with the actual data itself, right? But the, here's a problem. That, that, Right now, like I said in the, uh, at the beginning, these numbers are against the training data, the data that the model has already seen. So this is sort of like, you know, you can say, uh, you can argue it's like a cheating, right? Because you already know. So you overfit because we already uh, you have this data. But then the key thing here is that we want to find a general pattern so that not just the data in your hand, but also the data might come in future. But you want to see like sort of a general trend so that you can use that knowledge or whatever the thing you find, you can apply that to other data, right? That's the key, really, the whole point. So in that case, you want to actually do is like for the especially machine learning model, you want to run this as a test mode, change that to true, apply, and then calculate the AUC and see like if, you know the, how you know reliable uh, this thing is. So here now that like, we have two lines, so one is the tra against the training data 0 0.96, but against the test data that is a separated reserved data that was not used to build the model, but it, it was reserved somewhere else. And then now we use this as as if like a new data, give that to this random forest model and have it predict, and then. And then it's it basically like do that whole, you know, same thing for the a, uh, calculating AUC. And it turned out 0 0.81. And what that means, we, let's go to the ROC tab. And then here's a the training data. This is a 0 0.96 um, ROC, right? Okay. So this one is a testing data, 0 0.81, even AUC is 0 0.81. So there's a huge gap between these. And what you want to, what you, what you would care is this is test data because this is more reflecting with you know what you are going to predict later, right? If you in in the case of like you want to predict for the new data or future data and so on, right? But in the logistic regression, this one is at zero point eight five. So compared to random forest's testing data result, logistic regression is better. And how about logistic regression, like in running this under the test mode? So like, I'm going to change that to true, apply. And then how that would degrade 
or uh, maybe stay the same here. So the, with the, against the training data, AUC is 0 0.85. Against the test data, 0 0.84, 0.848, so almost like 0 0.85. So there's no much difference. Let's take a look at the ROC curve. And between the test and the training, it's almost like hard to see the difference. It's basically almost like the same. Right. So this is what I say, uh, what I mean when I say like random forests tend to have or a machine, not just random forest, but XGBoost or that type of the machine learning model tend to overfit with the training data or whatever the data that they build a uh, model uh, against them. So for that, you want to run, um, you know, against uh, in a test mode to see these AUC and other metrics and make sure um, there's not much gap, or if there's a gap, like the test, uh, the AUC against the test data is the one that like, you want to actually use to evaluate the uh, model performance. But for the statistical model, based on my experience, it's not going to make that much of a difference. It's better to test, uh, run it test mode, but at the same time, it's usually uh, the values uh, tend to be the same because statistical model has its own constraints. So it's 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 hard for it to uh, overfit with the training data. Anyway, so uh, having said that, now that we cover today, AUC, and then that's the key metric. If you want to get on, understand only one metric, the AUC is the one uh, you want to use. And then the other thing is like when you have the model and you want to start predicting and you're, you know, like with a new data, you want to start doing the prediction and use that predicted result for uh, making decision for your business, then that's where you want to consider using recall, precision, and F, uh, F1 score. Okay. So the key point here is the accuracy rate itself is not really reliable. If it's a very simple data, sometimes accuracy rate is also um yeah, it can be used, but you got to be careful because there's a type one error, type two error. So that's why like, you want to see these two precision recall and then average of that is F1 score. Okay, but again, the AUC is the one, it doesn't matter where the threshold is 0 0.5 or 0 0.3, whatever that could be. It, this is the one, it's really reflecting the model performance or uh, more precisely, it is telling you uh, you have really the reliable variables that have a good or strong relationship with the target variable, in this case, attribution. Okay. So having said that, that's it for today. Um, as always, uh, if you're interested in the um, <clears throat> past recording, we uh, this is a good 19th seminar. So that means we have tons of uh, past recording. So go to exploratory.io and under the run, go to training seminar, you see the training, uh, sorry, uh, se uh, online seminar section, click that, and then you're gonna get to uh, um, seminar, uh, online seminar page. And then at bottom of that page, there's a link to the past recording. Okay, and also the online seminar page, you can see like what are the future uh, seminar we are planning as well. And also if you're exploratory users, don't forget to check how to tutorials and how to video. We've been publishing a bunch of contents there as well. Okay, with that, uh, if you have any question or feedback, please feel free to reach out to me at can at the exploratory.io. Uh, otherwise, like, please follow us at, at Exploratory Data at Twitter. We announce, uh, make a bunch of announcements. So sometimes we introduce some new features and the upcoming features or upcoming seminars and so on. Okay, with that, thank you so much for joining today's seminar and then hopefully see you at the next seminar. Bye. <laughs>